Hey everyone, welcome back to Calculus 2. This will be lecture 12 of the course. And in this lecture, we're going to continue on with our uh, applications of integration. And we're going to look at two very cool applications. One, the first one, arc length. Right, so identifying the length of an arbitrary line in the plane. That's very interesting. And the second one will be identifying the surface area of uh, a three-dimensional shape uh, built on, ro on revolution. So kind of like what we did with volume, where we had you know, uh, ob uh, objects of, of revolution and a solid of revolution and we calculated the volume here what we're going to do is kind of have the same setup we're going to spin up a a shape in 3d in, you know a three-dimensional shape and figure out the surface area of it so we'll start with arc length so let's get going on that and we'll call this section three point or sorry 2.4 okay so this will be 2.4 arc length and surfaces of revolution. Right, so similar similar setup here. Right, what we're going to do is base both both of these applications are going to be based on some kind of a uh, some kind of a formula or capability from pre-calculus and we're going to extend it and sort of build an integral around that. Okay, so let's start with the arc length idea. And so with arc length, here's the setup. You've got some kind of a figure, okay, and or some kind of a, a function f, and an interval of interest, like say the interval between a and b, right? And so if you have this interval and you have this function, then you can identify some some arc uh, in 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 the plane. And what we want to be able to do is identify the length of that arc, right? How long is this line from A to B, from uh, basically AFA to BFB? Okay, so this would be B comma FB, and this is A comma F of A. We want to know what's the length of that line that connects those two, given that it's connected not in a straight line way, but through the function f. All right, so kind of an interesting sort of question there. Not something we typically have been, well, not something we've been able to even think about doing uh, pre-calculus. So this is all going to be based on, so this application will be based on the distance formula from pre-calculus. Okay, so the distance formula says uh, that the distance between x1, y1, and x2, y2, right, the, line, the straight line distance between these two points is d equals uh, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared and then you take the square root of that okay so this is the distance formula i'm sure everybody's seen this but just to make sure so you can you can rec if you recall right so say i've got you know two points in space here x1 y1 and i've got another one x2 y2 then the straight line distance is what this formula tells us Okay, and then in particular, this is your x2 minus x1, and this is your y2 minus y1. Right, so you can see that this is all kind of based on right triangle uh, properties, right? So this is basically the Pythagorean theorem at work here. Okay, so we're going to start with this formula, and this is going to be what we use to identify the length of curves in, that are not straight line. Okay, okay. <clears throat> and so let's let's jump into that. Let's kind of re reproduce this drawing here so we have it in case we need it. 
right? So I've got um, my A over here, and I've got my B over here, okay? And so that means I've got these two endpoints, and I'm interested in the line segment between them. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to partition, <clears throat> as per usual when we're dealing with integration, we're going to partition the interval of interest. Partition AB, right? So we'll call it delta, and that's going to be A equals X0, which will be less than X1, less than X2, less than dot, 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 less than Xn, which will be our B. All right, so this will be our X0 and this will be our xn. And then somewhere in here, right? somewhere in here you're gonna have an xi minus one and an xi, okay? And those are going to uh, define kind of a representative rectangle and the endpoints of the rectangle, the top points of the rectangle are of course gonna be on the function f Right now, what, what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, we, we're going to approximate this section of the curve here using a straight line. Okay, so we'll use a straight line approximation here. Now, this is obviously an enormously big rectangle. In, in reality, these rectangles would be very small, right, and increasingly small. And ultimately, kind of, I'm sure people can guess, we're going to reduce the the width of the partition to zero and therefore increase the number of rectangles to infinity. And when that happens, the straight line approximation will be equivalent to the, to the length of the curve. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so given this partition, let's uh, define delta xi equal to xi minus one minus, sorry, xi, minus xi minus one, right? So this minus this, right? That tells us the width of the of the thing. And then we'll let delta yi equal the same, yi minus yi minus one, right? So this is gonna be our xi yi, that's this point. And then this point here is xi minus one, yi minus one. Okay, so we've got those two points there, right? And then so we can set up the distance formula between these two points to give us the length of this line, okay? And I think, uh, let's see, maybe we'll call it, um, well, I'll just call it uh, SI. So the length of the arc on the ith interval will be XI minus XI minus one squared plus yi minus yi minus one squared and then the square root right this is equals so si will be equal to this is just the distance formula right this is just the distance formula for these two points plugged in and those two points are based on this interval which is part of this larger partition okay and so given this setup, this is gonna give us an approximation of the length of the arc between on this ith interval, right? And so we could sum up all such intervals to get an approximation of the length of the length of the arc between A and B, right? And so S, we'll call at, we'll, we'll use the, the variable S is going to be the, uh, the length of the arc. The length of the arc is approximately i equals one to n the sum, and then it's just this same thing, right? X i minus x i minus one, square that, plus y i minus y i minus one, square that, take the square root of the whole thing. Okay, so that's approximately what the length of, of the arc is on the interval a, b. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of mess with this. Right, so this is sort of you have we have the basis for um, the integral here, right? It's a sum of an, it's an approximation based on a sum that is you know kind of based on each of the intervals in this partition. As per usual, that's typically how how these integration applications spin up, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to mess around with this, do some algebra on it, and make it much nicer to work with, 
right? So this is equal to the sum from i equals one to n of, now instead of xi minus xi minus one, let's just put delta xi. And instead of y minus y minus one, let's put uh, delta yi. Right, we can do that, right? That's just right here. Delta xi is the change in x. Delta yi is the change in y on the i-th intervals, right? That's all that is. No problem there. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do is we are going to kind of do the same thing here. Or rewrite this. So the delta xi will stay the same. Now we're going to put the delta yi here, but then we're going to multiply this term by one. But instead of just multiplying by one, we're going to multiply by delta xi over delta yi squared. Okay, we can do that, of course, right? Because, or sorry, delta xi over delta xi squared, sorry. So this is delta x over delta x, right, squared, right? So this is just one, okay? And so obviously the reason we're going to do that is because we're going to move one of these delta x's into the denominator here. Okay, so, so we have delta xi squared plus delta yi over delta xi, that whole thing squared. And then we still have this lone delta xi sitting out here, don't we? Right, and then all this whole thing is uh, the square root, taking the square root of all that. Now we can, <clears throat> so we have two terms here, right? We've got the delta xi squared, and then we've got secondarily, we've got this other term over here. Now we can factor a delta xi squared out of both terms. Okay, so let's do that. Again, this is just algebra. So when we take factor a delta xi out of this, we get a one, right? So it'll be one plus delta yi over delta xi, that thing squared and we factored out a delta xi squared. All right, like so. And um, the last thing we'll do is we'll take this delta xi squared, and since it's a now a product in here, we can factor, sorry, we can pull this piece here outside of the root, outside of the radical. So I get sum of i equals, from i equals one to up to n of one plus delta yi over delta xi squared. That's the square root part. And then I'm gonna pull out the delta xi. And when I do that, right, I take the square root of the square, it just becomes delta xi on the outside. Okay, so that's sort of a little bit of algebra, right? now. I mean, again, fairly straightforward. It just looks complicated because some of these variable names are a little bit, you know, a uh, little bit uh, un, un, they're un atypical, right? They have subscripts and everything. But this is just the, this is the distance formula, super easy to set up, right? And it's obviously, hopefully intuitive at this point, right? That we'll just sum up all such intervals to get the overall Right, and then it's just renaming that, and then it's just multiplying. This is a trick we've done a thousand times. If you've gotten to calculus two, you've done this trick a thousand times, multiplying the top and bottom by the same thing, right? And then just do a little rearrangement there, and then do a little factoring, and then pull this thing outside the radical. So these are all like pre-calc tricks, right? The thing that makes it look a little bit tricky is that, you know, these are all like weird kinds of variables with deltas and subscripts and all that, but nothing to worry about. Okay, so what happens next? Well, so here's what we have, remember. I equals one to N of one plus delta YI over delta XI squared. Take the square root of that, multiply by delta XI. Okay, so that's what we have. That's where we left off on the previous page. Now, this is, a, this is an approximation. So S is approximately this. All right, so how does this approximation get better? Well, it gets better uh, when you have, a, you know, a finer partition, right? When you have more intervals, you know, when you have uh, narrower um, partition widths, right? When basically the norm of the partition goes to zero and the number of 
uh, representative rectangles goes to infinity. So as the norm goes to zero, i.e. n goes to infinity, this thing here becomes precise, right? So s is exactly equal to the limit as the norm of the partition goes to zero of this thing. Okay, right, so that's basically uh, where we're at. Okay, <clears throat> now let's, um, let's talk through how we can rewrite this even, right? So we basically know that we, we, we basically kind of implicitly set up some kind of an integral here, right? This is clearly got the form, for, you know, all of the telltale signs of this becoming an integral very soon, right? I mean, this is essentially the definition of an integral. Right, so what are we gonna do here? Well, we need, to, we need to kind of rewrite this expression a little bit because it isn't very convenient the way it's written. Okay, so here, here's what we, we can say. So because f prime of x exists, um, you know, for each uh, xi, for each of the, i, for each I of the, for every x in, in any of the intervals, Okay, so the derivative is, I mean, this is a continuous function, right? So the derivative exists everywhere, right? Um, the mean value theorem gives us a nice tool. So because f prime exists, the mean value theorem, right? So the mean value theorem says that there exists you know, some ci, right, in each of the intervals, so, right, so there's a ci in this ith interval, such that, such that f of xi minus f of xi minus one is equal to f prime of ci times xi minus xi minus one, right? So this is just the mean value theorem. Um, from calculus one, right? Then if you go back and you review that, this is a literal statement, right? A literal statement of it, okay? And so a little bit of algebra here, you know, we can see that f prime of ci will be equal to this, f of x, this side here, divided by this piece here. Okay, now what is this? There's another way to write this, right? This is, f of xi, right? Another way to write that is yi, right? And f of xi minus one, another way to write that is y of i minus one. All right, and what, what are these things? Well, this is just delta yi, and this is just delta xi. Okay, so this is, this. what that basically means is that this piece here and this piece here can be, you know, you can swap them, you can interchange, they're interchangeable, right? And so if S is equal to this limit, and I'm gonna rewrite it down here, uh, the limit as the norm of the partition goes to zero of the sum I equals one to N of one plus delta YI over delta XI squared, square root of that, right? So if we've got this thing, well, then this piece here can be rewritten as just f prime of ci, where c is some, some, you know, some real number in the interval, right? So this is equal to the limit as the norm goes to zero, i equals one to n of one plus f prime of ci. Still have to square it, right? And then we've still got the delta xi here, okay? So that's good. All right, now, is this it? I mean, can, you know, given this, we've rewritten this as a function, right? Now we can push this into the, into the new notation, right? So this becomes the integral.
from A to B of 1 plus F prime of X. We have to square that thing. And then the delta X is just DX, right? So as the norm of the partition goes to 0, the delta X, you know, that's where the DX comes from. So this is the arc length. Right, this is the arc length of F on A to B. Okay, this is the formula right here. All right, very cool. Very cool. I mean, it's all, I, I love these integration applications because they're all based on like pre calculus formulas that we've all seen a hundred times, or right? not a hundred times, maybe, but many times. I and mean, we've all seen the distance formula lots of times. You know, so and previously with the uh, with the uh, disk method, for example, we all know how to calculate the you know the volume of a cylinder, right? So based on that, we could spin up the disk method. And here, based on on this uh, very simple formula from from uh, algebra, college algebra or something, we can spin up this amazing integral that tells us the length of an arbitrary uh, curve <laughs> between two endpoints. So let's do an example here. Let's take a look at an example and see how this works. So let's find the arc length. Okay, we'll find the arc length. And actually, we're going to do the general example first. Find the arc length from x1, y1 to x2, y2 on the graph of y equals mx plus b. OK. <laughs> so I mean, we could obviously just use the regular distance formula to calculate this. But what we want to do here in this example is show that this new arc length formula is equivalent to the old one. The old one was just a special case of this. Right? So this is um, this is a more this is a generalization of the distance formula that we were used to. Okay. So let's take a look at this. So if we plot this function, right? We actually can't plot it, but we know what it we know what this is. This is a straight line, right? So I'll just put some arbitrary straight line here. And we'll call this, and we'll say these are the two endpoints here. So here's your x1, y1, and here's x2, y2. And we know, right, we know that this is going to be, you know, x2 minus x1, and this would be y2 minus y1, right? And so, so we also know that, you know, we're not really given the function, but we know that the derivative is just going to be, because it's a linear linear equation, right? The derivative is just going to be m, right? So m will be equal to f prime, okay, which we know is also, you know, basically the slope is calculated using the slope formula. So it'll be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, this is all just known, right? Known stuff. Okay, and so if we have the derivative, then we can plug this value into the integral that we just developed, right? And so s is going to be equal to the integral from this will be x1, this will be x2, so it'll be x1 up to x2, okay? And it's 1 plus, now it's, I'll just write it out first, f prime of x squared, square root of that dx. That's the formula, right? Or that's the integral that we have just established. And so let's plug all the values in x1 up to x2. Now here you've got the 1. Now what's the derivative here? Well, it's m, but better written as this, the slope formula here, y2 minus y1. And we have to square it. Okay. All right, so let's see here. All right, 
So now we can, let's go ahead and get a common denominator here, x2 minus x1. So you would end up with x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, all divided by x2 minus x1 squared, and we're gonna take the square root of that. Okay, and then it's dx. Now, so um, can we calculate this integral? Is this is this an integral we can we can manage? Uh, well, I mean, a lot of people will look at this and say this is not an integral. I have any idea how to deal with. But what's important to remember here is that x two and x one are known values, right? They're points. They're constants. They're not variables, right? So this whole thing right here is just a constant. Right? That's just a constant. And so that means all of that can come outside of the integrand, right? And so it's really just some constant times the integral of dx. And so that means what you have here is really just x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared over x2 minus x1 squared, square root of that, times the integral of dx, which is just x. Okay, so this is the integral, you know, after after you calculate it, this is what, what you get, right? So x1, and it's got to be evaluated from x1 up to x2. Okay, and so what happens when we do that? Well, what do we get here? We get, sorry, that should be an x2 down there. So this is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared over x2 minus x1 squared, take the square root. And then what happens here with the x? Well, you evaluate at the top and then you evaluate at the bottom, so you just get x2 minus x1 here. Okay. And so perfect, right? Because look, this is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared. Outside of here, you have x2 minus x1 squared. So if I were to take this and pull this out of the integrand, then it becomes x2 minus x1, right? So these cancel, and you're left with x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared square root, right? That's the distance. Is that the distance? Yes, of course it is, right? This is a straight line, that's the distance formula. So we've just derived the distance formula using our arc length integral, right? So that just kind of shows you that the distance formula is sort of a special case, right? Of, of this like sort of broader capability. Okay, so just to state that, uh, you know, uh, so this is the uh, familiar distance formula. Okay, so that's good. Okay, let's do, uh, well, that was a good example, but let's do a quote unquote real example, right, where we actually calculate the length of a, of a, of a, of a non-straight line, right? So let's do one of those here. So find the arc length. Find the arc length of the graph of uh, y equals x cubed over six plus one over two x, okay? And specifically on the interval uh, one half to two. All right, so we got this interval. Okay, so you know a quick run out to Wolfram Alpha, and if you plot this, you see that it looks something like this. Okay, so maybe you've got um, you know one half is down here, right? That makes one right like right there, and then maybe two is over here. Okay, so we're specifically interested in the arc length between these two points. So that piece right in the middle there, this sort of highlighted piece. 
Okay, so what's that length of arc? Okay, well, what we're going to need here is, you know, we know we're going to need the derivative. Okay, so let's calculate the derivative. So y prime is going to be equal to, you know, the derivative ddx of x cubed over 6 plus 1 over 2x. Okay, and we can calculate that quickly. It's 3x squared over 6 uh, plus this will be negative x over negative 2 all still over 2. Okay, and then we can rewrite that a lot better. Obviously, this could be written as x squared over 2 minus 1 over 2x squared, sorry, 2x squared. Yeah. Okay, and then this can be plugged into into our integral. All right, so our integral says that s is equal to the integral from a to b of 1 plus f prime of x. Let's square that, take the square root, dx. That's our integral. Right, and so we've got f prime here. It's this guy. Plug it into this and try to calculate the integral. So 1 plus x squared over 2 minus 1 over 2x squared squared. Uh, I guess I should put the bounds in one half up to two. All right there you go. That's our formula. Or sorry, that's our integral. And so can we can we calculate this? Um, yeah, we can. We definitely can. But let's let's clean this up just a little bit first. So one plus. I'm going to factor out the one half, and I get what x squared minus one over x squared. Okay, and then I gotta square that whole thing. Okay. And now I can expand this pretty pretty easily. You can think of this as x to the negative two power if you want to. That might be, make it easier to do the expansion. But it's one half up to two, and then it's one plus one half times. Um, let's see here. Uh, x to the four, okay, x to the fourth minus, and you end up with x squared over x squared, right, when you do the outside insides, and then minus x squared over x squared again when you do the inside out, inside insides, and then plus one over x to the fourth, okay, and then that whole thing like that, this should actually be one fourth dx. Okay, so I kind of did that, you know, you might want to off to the side, expand this thing. <clears throat> but that's more or less what it looks like. All right, and then what do I have to do? Well, um, this is just one, minus one, minus one, right? So that'd be minus, basically minus two, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and plug all of that in. So I've got the integral from 1 half up to 2, and then it's going to be 1 plus 1 fourth x to the fourth, and I'm going to keep this separate here, minus 2 plus 1 over x to the fourth. Okay, so this is all just algebra so far. And let's see what comes next here. Okay, so I can get a common denominator of four, and that'll allow me to kind of bring the the one fourth outside of the of the thing. And so if I do that, I get so this would become four. Uh, sorry, yeah, four over four, right? And then I can do some subtraction with this middle term here. And I think once I do that, I get one half up to two, and then this will be the square root of, and then it should be like one fourth, and then it's just x squared plus, uh, hold on a second, I, yeah, so x squared plus one over x squared, quantity squared, there we go. Yep, that's fine. All right, so here I kind of 
rewrote this thing and uh, and then kind of repackaged it as a square. Okay. Um, and the reason you'd want to do that is because then you can get rid of the square root. Right. So it kind of helps with that piece of it. So one half up to two, and then um, let's see. At this point, you can write it as one half times x squared plus 1 over x squared. Excellent, okay. <laughs> that one was a little bit, uh, some of that algebra in there was a little bit tricky. You just have to, you know, remember you can pause the, pause the video and make sure you understand those intermediate steps. Okay, um, but then this is very straightforward at this point. Pull the 1 half out and what do we get here? We get, when we integrate here, we get x to the third power over 3 and then this would be x to the negative 2. So if I subtract 1 from negative 2, um, oh, sorry, if I add 1 to negative 2, it becomes negative 1. So this actually reduces to 1 over x. Okay, and then it's 1 half up to 2. That's the region of integration, the limits. Okay, very good. And so I can plug all of this in here. And so I get, let's see, 8 thirds plus a half, and then minus, and when I plug the 1 half in down here, well, I'll just plug it in for now, 1 half over 3, or 1 half to the third power divided by 3, um, plus, and then it's um, 1 over a half, right? Let's just put that in there. Okay, looks good. And then the next line is I think we can make a, the most progress here. So it'll be 8 thirds minus a half, and then this is going to be oh, 1 over 24. Um, and then this is just 2, so it'll be plus 2. All right, looks good, I think, yep. And so then I get 1 half, and then common denominator 24, let's just do that so we can get all of this sorted out. So 64 minus 12 uh, minus 1 plus 48 all over 24. All right, so we've got all that. And that gets us 99 out of 24, which is like 33 over 16. So it's like a little over two. Okay, that was kind of a long, mostly algebra actually. Yeah, so this the length of this line here, of this arc, is a little more than two. Does that make sense? I mean, this isn't a perfect drawing, but from here over to here is two, so that looks pretty reasonable actually even with this drawing, so yeah. So 33 over 16 is the exact value of that of that line. All right, um, let's try another one. That one was kind of uh, a little bit. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, let's find the arc length. So we'll find the arc length of the graph. Of and then the function will be y minus 1 cubed equals x squared and then we're interested in the arc length on the interval 0 to 8 okay so 0 to 8 all right so what does this look like well this isn't this uh, equation here isn't written, you know, y here is not explicitly written as a function of x, so you may have to do a little work on it to plot this, or of course you can plug it into a utility. And if you do that, what you'll see is that uh, this is the point 0, 1, and 8, when x is equal to 8, y is equal to 5. So I'll just kind of throw it off here in the distance. So. 8 comma 5 roughly. Okay, and so what we're interested in is the length of this line. It's obviously not a straight line. 
So the function, as I said, is not explicitly written as a function of y. So might be a good idea to begin by trying to do that. Make sure that that's doable. Okay, and so it is, right? So y minus one cubed equals x squared. That implies that, well, we can write it. Let's try it the other way, actually. Let's write x as a, as a function of y. It just looks like it'll be easier to do that, right? And we have the endpoints. So that means x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y minus one cubed. Okay. And so another way to write that would be plus or minus y minus one to the three halves power. Okay. And so uh, it we have this plus or minus. Now in this case, um, we're only right so we, we are only interested in the interval from where you know where y is between I guess 1 and 5 right and so we're only interested in the positive uh, results here the the negative is just not relevant to the, to, to the problem at hand so we're only interested in the um, well plus y minus one to the three halves piece for this problem. Okay, so that's that's nice because this is a fairly easy y, y minus one to the three halves power. Um, can we differentiate this? Can we find x prime? So x prime equals dx over dy and that's gonna be d dy of y minus one to the three halves power. And yeah, we can we can differentiate that, right? And we would get three halves y minus one, and then it would be you know three halves minus one, which is one half. And then we would have to differentiate the inside, which would just be one, right? And so you know we don't need to write it, so we'll just leave it like this. So here's our derivative. Okay. Now our integral. That so if, if we have the derivative, uh, if we have you know. Um, uh, f prime of y, we have that, so we can we can plug this into our integral. So s should be equal to. Let's just write the formula first. S from the integral from c to d. The integral from c to d of what one plus. Now you can write f prime of y if you want. You can also write dx dy. Um, just remember that now x is a function of y so the integral has to the integration has to take place over the y uh, variable okay so we have this and then it is the integral from now for y if we look back at our picture here we have we know that y goes from 1 up to 5 All right so our integration bounds are 1 and from 1 to 5 and then it's 1 plus three halves times y minus one to the one half and that whole thing is squared All right, so it looks like that okay and let's see we can clean this up this is going to be quite a bit easier than the previous one I think to deal with but you got one plus now this will be nine over four and this is y minus one to the one half we're squaring that so it's just y minus one isn't it Okay, so we got that. All right, and let's see here. We can, let's see. Yeah, we can multiply this through, so you get nine nine fourths y minus nine fourths, and then plus the one, and so it'd be nine fourths plus four fourths so you get you know minus five fourths so let's write it here so it'd be one to five and then it would be nine fourths y minus five fourths okay so if that's a, something you might want to take a second so nine fourths times y is nine fourths y boom and then nine fourths times negative one would be negative nine fourths 
and then you add it to this, negative 9 fourths plus 4 fourths gives you negative 5 fourths. So that's where that came from. All right, so, and then let's go ahead. Oh, sorry, and we still have the square root here. Let's not forget that. Okay, so um, let's pull out the four, the, de the denominator, the four value. And so that means we have one half. So you can pull that out. When you pull it out of the radical, it becomes just one half. And then it is the integral from one up to five. And this whole thing is just nine y minus five square root. Okay, so I think this is probably as good as it's going to get as far as like, you know, manipulating the integrand until it's like really easy. And so we can integrate this, I believe. So we'll set u equal to 9y minus 5, then du is equal to 9 dy, right? And so that means du over 9 equals dy. Okay, so that's perfect. So that's kind of the side calculation. And so you get 1 half times the integral from 1 to 5, and then your dy is du over 9, so it's be basically going to be u to the 1 half power over 9 times du. All right. And so 1 over 18, pull the 9 out. And then this, to integrate this, just becomes what? u to the 3 halves over 3 halves. And then it's uh, 1 up to 5. Now remember these integration bounds, that's on y, not u. So just keep be careful of that. You know, sometimes people will say y equals 5, y equals 1, y equals 5, y equals 1, just to make sure that, you know, you don't go plugging these into u because you get nonsense otherwise if you do that. And so then once you have it in this form, um, Actually, let's let's take this into account. So two divide, 18 divided by 2 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So this would be 1 over 27. And then instead of u, let's put, put the 9y minus 5 back in. And now it's 1 up to 5. All right. And so I've got, let's see, 1 over 27. And then it's 9 times 5 minus 5 minus 9 times 1 minus 5 okay. and so 1 over 27 9 times 5 is 45 minus 5 is 40 um, so sorry this is 3 halves power 2 still so this would be 40 to the 3 halves power and then minus what is this um, this would be 4 so 9 times 1 is 9 minus 5. So 4 to the 3 halves power. OK. And when we do all of that, what do we get? We get about 9.07. OK. So the length of this line segment here is about a little over 9. And so that should make sense, because this is a little over 8. Just based on the gentle curvature there, we're saying this one is, you know, kind of up like that. It's a little bit longer, right, if you were to lay it out. Totally reasonable answer. It's what you'd expect. Okay, perfect. So I think uh, we'll make a part B for this video, uh, and we'll jump into the second application, which is going to be the um, surfaces of revolution. So we'll make a part B.